Evening Stroudwater Distillery. How's everyone doing tonight? All right. Uh, yeah, th thank you guys for, for coming and doing this here. Um, been hosting this show for almost a year now at Stroudwater Distillery. Uh, we usually have a, a pretty decent turnout and, and uh, you know, new fresh lineup of comedians every, every week. Try to keep things uh, switching up with, with fresh faces. Um, since the last time that I did this with you guys, I've uh, done a few things. I was in the New England's Funniest Comedian Competition, placed third in the finals, and had the opportunity to open for Mark Norman, which was uh, a really incredible experience. I've uh, been traveling a lot throughout New England and making plans to, uh, to go further, um, making, making my way down the eastern seaboard New York, uh, Tennessee, North Carolina are places that I'm hoping to get to, Pennsylvania, and greater New England. Um, so always a great time here. Uh, the staff is fantastic, uh, always friendly, super super helpful. Um, also involved with the uh, the River Comics still in the Lewiston Auburn area and, and, and throughout the state of, of Maine. Uh, great time so hope, hope to see people uh, out some future shows and hope that you enjoy this one thanks a lot cool so this is this is our comedy night here every Thursday uh, we're all here for comedy Did you guys come out because you knew comedy was happening awesome what about you folks is this a surprise are you here for comedy or you're here for comedy oh, awesome very cool uh, so yeah, every Thursday night I host comedy here, fresh lineup. Uh, next week's a little different. We're here on Friday instead, so uh, so keep an eye out for that. A few other things happening. I'd like to make a few announcements for the uh, the uh, brewery uh, distillery. Tomorrow night is uh, Mystery 207. It's having a murder mystery. Uh, that is a sold out event. So if you don't have tickets already for it, I'm sorry you missed out, but keep an eye out for the next time. I don't know when it's gonna be, it is a mystery. Um, October 1st is Cornhole Tournament. October 7th is Salsa Night. That is uh, Salsa the Dance, not Salsa, or sorry, yeah, Salsa the Dance, not Salsa the Dip. So, um, so definitely come out for that. Uh, trivia every Wednesday. Yeah, get more comfortable. Uh, lots of things happening, so keep an eye out for all the events. Um, by a round of applause, how many of you have been to a comedy show before? All right, everybody, awesome. So you, you know the general rules, basically um, keep table talk to a minimum if you can. Um, uh, maybe silence your cell phones. Uh, you know, those, those types of things. And, uh, and laugh and have a good time, which we're gonna do. I'm excited. I'm going to close this door because these people are fucking loud. <laughs> That's better. Alright, now we can have a comedy show, huh? Yeah! Yeah! Awesome. Now, my name is Ian McDonald. I'm your host for the evening. I'm very excited. We've got a great lineup for you. Uh, go ahead and give yourselves a round of applause for being here tonight. A uh, big shout out to all of you for being here. Yeah. A uh, big shout out to all of the comedians you're going to hear tonight. I'd like to give a big shout out to Ben Chadwick. Yeah. Big shout out to Nick Gordon. Big shout out to Al Doniker. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to the staff here at Stroudwater Distillery doing a great job slinging drinks, slinging food. Uh, big shout out to Stroudwater Distillery itself for allowing us to have comedy. It's fantastic. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Thompson's Point for allowing Stroudwater Distillery to be here. Uh, big shout out to the city of Portland for allowing uh, the Thompson's Point area to have have all these things that all these wonderful things you know concerts on the point and all of that. Uh, big shout out to uh, the state of Maine for allowing the city of Portland to be a city. Uh, big shout out to.
Massachusetts for allowing the state of Maine to secede and become its own state. I think that, if I remember correctly, uh, that it had something to do with the Louisiana Purchase. So big shout out to the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, big shout out to the United States for allowing Maine to still be a member of the Union. Yeah. How about a shout out to UN and NATO while we're at it? Right? Yeah. These guys do good work, I think. Uh, big shout out to Subaru for manufacturing the car that got me here tonight. Yeah. Shout out to Gasoline for fueling my car. Less of a shout out on gasoline prices. They're getting better, but uh, still not the best they could be. Uh, a little better every day though. That's all we can hope for, I suppose. I'd like to give a big shout out to Oxygen for fueling my muscles, allowing me to walk up here and allowing me to shout out. Without Oxygen, I wouldn't be able to shout out to you. So shout out to Oxygen. Uh, big shout out to Earth. For always being there when I need it. Don't give up on Earth. Don't cover your mouth. I want to hear you laughing. Uh, I am getting some blank stares though. I should, should probably explain. I'm a props comic. I should, uh, should also probably apologize for my energy level tonight. Uh, I was up really late alphabetizing my t-shirts. I went to bed when I realized they were all t-shirts. Actually, I uh, was at a, a vintage clothing store recently and uh, this little place in, in Milford, New Hampshire called Unitary, really cool place. Uh, has anyone here ever been to Milford, New Hampshire before? A couple people? Awesome, yeah. So. For those of you that haven't been, those of you who have, definitely check out Unitary. It's a really cool vintage clothing shop. I got to perform there a little while back, and uh, I got there early because I wanted to check out their stock. I'm really glad that I did, because uh, I found this gem. Uh, I'm told that it's 30 years old, and uh, I only paid $60 for it, so I feel like I Two dollars a year, I got a pretty good deal. Let's definitely check that out. I think you guys have heard enough from me. Uh, we got a great lineup tonight. Really excited for everyone that I've got on. This next fellow, a very good friend of mine, he is the vice president of the River Comics. Please put your hands together for Nick Gordon. Nick Gordon. I'm here at Stroudwater Distillery on this fine Thursday evening. Uh, first uh, full day of fall, right? And we're going to do a little stand-up comedy for everyone. Uh, hopefully we get a nice crowd in there. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys come out to see a show sometime, either here or at uh, uh, some of our other venues that we do. I, I, I perform at Craft Brew Underground in Auburn a lot, and uh, Colisee Club in, in Lewiston, and a lot of other different places. You can find those shows at uh, theRiverComics.com, um, and uh, you know, just thanks for coming out and supporting live stand-up comedy. We really appreciate it. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. Hi. No. That was weird. Sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. You're, you have to pee. Or are you pooping? Are you pooping? <laughs> I think she's pooping. We'll find out when she comes out. Ooh. Uh, I think the, my favorite part of this show is how each comedian's hair is going to get shorter as we work our way through the show. But you, you wait and see. You wait and see. What happened? Like, Ian's was quite long. Ben's a little bit. Mine's shorter. I actually recently got a haircut. Mine was longer. Uh, not, not as long as theirs. Mine was longer, but I have a real job. And, and I went to the office after the pandemic, and they're like, wow, Nick, <laughs> we've never seen your hair or your beard that long before. And I was like, oh, do you want me to cut it? No, 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 no. Legally, we can't tell you to cut your hair. 
but it's pretty long. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll get a trim, I'll get a trim. I went to my barber and I said to her, hey, uh, can you make me look a little more midlife crisis and a little less actual crisis? And she's like, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. In fact, in the end, you're going to look like Bradley Cooper from A Star Is Born. And I said, you know, in the end, he kills himself. And she goes, I know. It was just number one. That was a good punchline, too. It was right on my right on my Was it one time joke again? Did you miss it? So, I have a real job, and I had a hair, my hair was longer. And I have a real job, so when I got to work after the pandemic, shh, shh, don't, don't tell them, they're not part of the show, part of the show. I got to the work after the pandemic, and I said, hey, uh, my, my boss said, hey, your hair is uh, pretty long. We've never seen it that long, or your beard that long before. And I said, oh my god, you guys, can you tell me to get a haircut? He said, no, 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 legally can't tell you to get a haircut. And I said, all right, well, you know, I'll go get a haircut. It's not exactly the same as it was before, I know you guys are, but so this is just kind of the, the rundown of what happened. So I went to my barber and I said, hey, uh, can you, can I get a haircut? And, you know, he made me look a little more midlife. I can not tell the joke again. Can, I tell you? <laughs> can, can you make me look a little more midlife crisis and a little less actual, don't talk on someone's joke, uh, a little less actual crisis? I'm just kidding. She's like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. She says, in the end, you're gonna look like Bradley Cooper from A Star Is Born. And I said, but in the end, he kills himself. And she goes, I know. My barber wants me to kill myself. Do you have a drink waiting out there? It's right here. Okay, that I said. There you go, okay. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the rest of this. There's plenty of, plenty of good seats still available. But if you don't want to come and sit down, please go back outside because I have more jokes to tell these people. Oh my goodness, that was fun. How about that? Oh. The things that happen at a live comedy show in an old barn, or whatever this thing is, I'm not sure. This is a great space, thank you guys for coming on. Uh, who here is married? Married, married? Married, married, married. Yeah, everyone's married? You guys aren't married yet? Let me tell you the secret to marriage. Let me tell you the secret to marriage, because I used to be married. When your significant other comes home and says, hey, we're going gluten-free, your answer cannot be, well, I'm gonna get mac and cheese by fucking a coworker. It's funny, it's funny. I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying cheating is okay. I'm not saying that, well, it was fun for a little while. <laughs> but anyway, no, that's, um, that was some time ago. That was some time ago. I've learned a lot of lessons since then. My life is far, far better. In fact, this October will be our seven year anniversary for our divorce. I'm doing fine. We actually, we finalized our divorce on Halloween. You like Halloween? What a great day. Especially if you haven't told the kids yet. Yeah, and you gotta go take them trick-or-treating that night. One last chance to dress up like a family. Got to hear my ex-wife say, hey, uh, check that candy for razors and poison and alimony. Usually it's a pretty good line, but come back in, I'll tell it again. Uh, no. uh, it was really just a night of me walking around the neighborhood going, trick or treat, smell my feet, is this someplace I can sleep? That's new, I just thought of that in the shower today. Thank you guys so much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm been, I've been divorced for seven years, um, and uh, my life is okay now. There was a time though, like have you guys ever rolled your own uh, piece of bologna with mustard in it for dinner? And been like, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, it's okay, that's a good laugh, that's fine. 
Yeah. And if it's not funny, don't laugh. <laughs> but it's a little too close to home. I did. I did discover. I discovered at uh, Hannaford they have uh, have the hot bar at the Hannaford. So you guys know the hot bar. You get the chicken tenders in the bag with the time written on it. It's like I don't really want to know so much what time these chicken tenders were made. I kind of want to know who made them back there <laughs> at the Hannaford. Looking at you, Dale. <laughs> Put your name on your work. But they're good, they're good chicken tenders. They're like really crispy and salty. Goes so good with a gallon of water. <laughs> I had to cut corners, I had to cut some corners when I was newly divorced and had my own place. I had to cut some corners. I, uh, I used to buy the uh, Hannaford brand toilet paper and it would say right on it, little things that compares to Charmin. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take your word for it, Hannaford, because I don't have the money to buy Charmin and Hannaford brand toilet paper and tacos and do the test. So, here we go. <laughs> I had to get my own apartment, of course. You know, the guy always has to move out, right? I had to get my own apartment. Fortunately for me, I had some friends who had an apartment for me, uh, a little place up in New Gloucester. Uh, farmhouse, a little apartment above the kitchen in the farmhouse. Um, it's a working farmhouse, and I said, oh, what do you do at the working farmhouse? You got pigs, cows, and chickens, and horses? No, not that kind of working farmhouse. Uh, we do weddings every weekend. Wedding, barn, hipster, farmhouse, divorced dad, father of two, first apartment, above a kitchen, at a wedding barn venue. Who here has been to a wedding barn venue for a wedding? Anybody? Do we know what I'm talking about here? Yeah, for those of you who don't know what that is, picture a canoe full of beer. <laughs> picture a bride and his, I mean a groom and his groomsmen in a bunch of Carhartt and boots and straw hats and a bride who's wearing a, a dress from the 1800s, but she actually lost her virginity when she was 18. <laughs> picture, picture your future mother-in-law sitting on a bale of hay. Picture the, 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 the priest or the officiant or whoever is doing the wedding. Most likely it's a friend of yours who just got his online uh, certificate to do weddings. And he's got a straw in his... <laughs> this is a long fucking joke. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're fine. How else are they supposed to make money? Certainly not for me. No, thank you. Uh, he doesn't fucking know. Uh, picture during the wedding when they say the line, do you take this woman in sickness and health that at that exact moment, someone's contracting Lyme disease. That's a wedding barn venue. Single dad, father of two, first apartment, I think. <laughs> so that's a wedding barn, those are wedding barns. I actually kind of enjoyed it, uh, because like when they would show up on Thursday, I'd be sitting on the front porch, like just in my underwear, smoking a cigarette, I'd be like, hey, <laughs> welcome to your happiness. <laughs> Come on, man. Who are you? It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. That's only ten minutes of my fifty-minute set, guys. So, but, um, no, I, I actually did. I, I, I had I had a great year there. It was fun. My my most fun I had was when I would put the kids in the window during the reception and just flip the lights on and off real fast. And then I go to the other window and be like, these are the ghosts of your future mistakes. Wear a condom tonight. <laughs> it was fun. That's what I'm saying. That's the one I'm sure of. If you can imagine such a thing. Are you guys having fun? Is this fun? Are you having fun? Having fun? Having fun? That's good. That's good because fun as an adult is a lot different than fun as a kid. I don't know if you guys remember being kids or not, uh, but you all know how to be adults, and you all know how to have fun. Like, this is, this is kind of weird, this is fun as an adult. But as a kid, as a kid, 
you'd have fun. Like I had fun, literally, I'd just throw a tennis ball against my parents' garage, just throw a tennis ball, just like practicing baseball. I was Roger Clemens, just throwing that tennis ball until my arm hurt. That was so much fun. And now, as an adult, like I sleep with my arm like this, and I wake up and I need surgery the next day. That's not fun. That's an adult. And then as a, as a kid, you ride your bike. You just ride your bike, ride your bike, ride your bike, ride your bike, and then you hit a curb, and you jump your bike, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm some BMX bike guy. I don't know anybody. And then you ride your, hit another curb, boom. Now as an adult, we drive out of here, we hit the curb, spend a fun night in jail. It's not that fun. As a kid, we play video games. Video game, video game, video game, video game. Just play video games as much as we can, as much as our mother would let us. I had Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, Zelda. A little later, Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know what the rest of you guys played. I'm trying to think of ball, a stick, and a boop. Did you guys? Oh, sorry, that's that's rude. I don't I don't like being mean. Hey, bud, how you doing? Good. You want to do you want to do take five? Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Careful. Oh yeah. All right. Give it up. Come on, bud. Give it up. His hair is a little shorter than mine, and he walked in on my punchline. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's fine. This is not a real comedy show. <laughs> but as a kid, you play video game, video game, video game. Now, as an adult, you have fun. What do you do? You watch Zoom meetings. That's fun. Just sitting there going, why aren't these two women naked and kissing? It's a long, it's a long way to go for a porn joke, you guys. I appreciate you hanging in on that. I'm just gonna check here real quick because I'm having, I can't do my password. Does anyone know my password? Oh my goodness gracious. So uh, I am a father. I have a couple of kids. I have a 14-year-old daughter. She just turned 14, freshman in high school. Uh, it's not cool. It's not good. It's not nice. I don't like it. Uh, she's 14. She's growing up. She, uh, you know, the whole the thing that happens. It's uh, it's hard for me because, like, in my mind, Tampax is a place in Florida where skateboarders go to retire. I thought that was pretty funny. So I thought as I was when I thought of the shower. I was like, that's like that's funny. That's good. Tampax because it's got the X in it. You know, X means extreme. And like if you have extreme tampon, like that's not good. <laughs> that's bad. That's real bad. She's 14. She um she she likes to do like FaceTime on her Do you guys know like a 14-year-old girl with a FaceTime on her phone? Like, oh my god. Emily, where where are oh my god, Emily. I just like doing the voice. Emily, Olivia, let's do a FaceTime chat. And then I have like one bathroom in my house, and I come out of the bathroom and I'm in a towel, and like I'm in the background of her FaceTime, and her friend Emily's like, oh my god, what the hell is that? <laughs> is that a Sasquatch? You have a chupacabra in your house, dear. You gotta be aware of your FaceTime background. That's, that's the moral of the story. <laughs> Essentially, FaceTime background. That's what the name of that one, FaceTime background. That's the name of that joke. I hope you guys liked it. I sure do. Yeah, 14 is crazy. Like, she's at that age where she won't say, I love you anymore. I'm like, Claire, I love you. Have a great day at school. She's like, mm hmm. Yeah, whatever. I love you. Have a good day. Please say I love you back to me. I don't care. I don't wanna. I don't have to. You can't. You don't even look at me. All right. So here's the deal, Claire. From now on, every time I say I love you and you don't say I love you back, I'm taking a dollar out of your college fund. 500 times I've come in this year so far. She's not said I love you back to me. So her college fund is at negative $500. You saw it coming, didn't you? You knew what I was going to do. Yeah. I saw him smiling before I did the punchline. That's kind of an obvious one. But well, it's another fun joke I love to do. I love doing that one. I love my kids. My son, not so much, he's 11. I don't know if any of you guys have experience with an 11-year-old boy. A little tough, a little difficult, a little difficult. Doesn't want to brush his teeth, doesn't want to take a shower. 
just, just a little, like, in order to clean an 11-year-old boy, it's like training a Navy SEAL. You just, like, throw them in the ocean, and then you spray them with a hose until they ring a bell. And I, don't, I don't like that one either, guys. Um, it's a weird one. But he's 11, he's 11, and um, I had to clean his, help him clean his room the other day. He's got one of those magic eight balls, and he picked up the magic eight ball, and I looked at it, it didn't even shake it, it just said, oh, look, not so good. I said, all right, that's cool. All right, so that's a bad one, too. We're gonna start crossing these off. This is the test room for all the new jokes that I've been doing for five years, and <laughs> you guys are, no, I love you guys, you guys are a good audience. It's hard, it's hard. Let me do the other one again that I did with the lady. That was fun. They're having a good time out there. We should talk to people out there. Mm -hmm. I, um, anybody like sex? Who likes sex? Anybody like sex? Anybody like sex? Oh yeah. I don't have any sex jokes. So. No, I'm just kidding, I have tons of them. Uh, I, um, I did a couple of booty calls during the pandemic. Had some booty calls. Do you know, you know what a booty call is? Um, during the pandemic, just kind of stuck at home. What are you gonna do, right? Uh, but in honor of the pandemic, I said to myself, you know what? We gotta change the name of the booty call. So I came up with three ideas for the booty call during the pandemic. First one was um, Uber Eat Me. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Next one was uh, Grub Hubba Hubba. Not bad. And my third choice was Hordash. That <laughs> always gets the best. I think that's the one. I think that's what it the uh, the promo code for Hordash is Hello Fresh. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I, uh, I I I had I had a girl tell me to uh, tap into my primal urges, and I was like, uh, Do I look like I was primal urges to you? Look like more like every member of the band Bare Naked Ladies rolled into one. I look more like a out of work build a bear. <laughs> I don't have prime work. She's like, no, spank me and pull my hair. I said, at the same time, how am I gonna hold the camera? <laughs> I did it though, I tried it, you know, I didn't do it. You guys remember Wilson from Castaway, the volleyball? That's a fun one too. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna keep torturing you guys. Uh, you know, I don't know if um, if everyone is aware of this or not, but Viagra causes melanoma. Have you guys heard this? Viagra causes melanoma. Yeah, it's some. It's a side effect of uh, all the old people fucking in Florida outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spit. Oh, did anyone have a spit take? That would be great. Oh, darn. They do have a pink Viagra now. They have women's Viagra. Uh, just like every other medication, there is side effects. You know, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache. All the things you want during sex. I'll tell you what, though. If your wetness lasts more than four hours, seek my attention. <laughs> yeah. I am... <laughs> this is... This is not the end, but this is... <laughs> Let me just double check. Yeah, we got... Uh, I got... All right, I'll just do this. Hold on. Uh, so this is... Are you 40... Are you 43 yet? Are you... You look pretty... You, look, you guys look pretty young, right? I'm 43, and uh, this is what you're going to look like. So, and this is what you guys are going to be divorced from. <laughs> so, so good in. I, I try to get better shape. I um, I went to the gym recently. Started going to the gym, and I was like, "What's the easiest exercise a forty-something-year-old guy can do?" I said, "Oh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I can do that. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Here we go." I was like, "All right, ready?" I told my trainer, "I was like, I got the exercise ready. Here we go. You watch. I'll show you." And he's like, "Go ahead, man. Whatever. Don't hurt yourself." And I said, "All right, head, shoulders, knees." Ooh, knees, <laughs> knees, 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 bell buckle penis, and I was like, that's it, and I can't go to, I can't go to Planet Fitness anymore, so. All right, you guys, that's my time. I appreciate you listening. I hope you had fun. Ian McDonald, you guys. Here it is. Yeah. Nick Gordon, everybody. Woo! Great job. 
How, how are you guys doing? How are you feeling so far? You guys, you guys got energy for your final comedian of the evening? Are you ready for your final comedian of the evening? Please put your hands together for Al Goniker. Yeah, my name is Al Goniker, and I'm a local comedian here in Portland, Maine. How did you get started? Um, I got started about six years ago, um, and I spent probably about eight years ago, I started having these ideas, you know, you just kind of go about your life and you start thinking, it's probably how all comedians start out, is you start thinking that, oh, that's weird, why is, why is that done that way? This, this is funny, oh, this is a funny thing my dad said, this is a funny thing my mom said, and the, those turned into jokes, and so I procrastinated for about a year, and then I finally went to my first uh, open mic, which was, actually was Dogfish Bar and Grill, which is a music open mic, so. That's how I got my start. And of course, like as any newbie, I did the right thing, which is I ran my mouth constantly for 10 minutes because I was terrified of any dead air. So. And can you tell us like some of the topics that you like to talk about? Yeah, um, it's probably easier if I tell you what I don't like to talk about. Number one, I avoid politics. Um, if I ever do any joke where I mention a politician's name or something, it usually has nothing to do with politics. So I, I try to stay away from politics and current events because it's kind of like, I, I love the line from Breaking Bad, uh, grade school t-ball against the New York Yankees. So the Colberts, the Daily Show, all the Bill Maher, all the professionals, they've got that covered. They're working 20 hour days to do jokes on current events. So when people come and see someone that they don't know, they want to hear about me. So I do, I do stuff about my family and my, my uh, upbringing, my experiences, and, and I try to just pretty much stick to that. Um, yeah. What, what, uh, what's the comedy scene like in Maine these days? It's, um, it's at, well, I would say around April of 2021 is when things started kicking back off. Um, we've had a pretty strong comedy scene for several years here, more than a lot of out-of-staters realize. And so, I mean, now it's bumping. I'm actually starting my own show at Urban Farm Fermentary uh, over on Anderson Street. And so that'll be starting this Wednesday with Joey Carroll headlining. And um, so get your tickets. They're selling out. So, And uh, Joey Carroll is a top, top headliner who's performed all over the world. And so, well, the, the scene is... It's going strong, but I think a lot of the comedians that I talk to, friends of mine, they're noticing that there's a little bit of a vacuum, and so um, a few other comics I know, um, like Danny Jordan, Leah Douglas, they've uh, Mark, Marcus Cardona, they've started a lot of the rooms around here, um, and you know, to get more stage time, to get, to, I mean, it's it's a small city, but we, we should have a lot more shows going on, and and so it's growing.